How many of you believe that this morning? If there was a medal for mother, you'd win, everyone. I'd like to bring you just a very brief message this morning. I think it's important for us to dive into God's Word and to see what God has to say about our mothers. The fallacy is, you know, that motherhood is a job. Well, it's not a job. It's a ministry. How many of you agree with that, Mom? It's a ministry. A ministry. In the Hebrew, the word mom is described and pronounced as ame. And many mothers would probably go, oh, me, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? The actual definition is the bond of the family. Winston Churchill said that if we want to change the nation, if we want to change the world, then we'll begin by enlisting our mothers. Would you not agree with me, church? Many of you might remember the song that says, Who rocks the cradle can change the world, can change the nation. You see, whoever rocks the cradle will be the ones that will be those that will create in the minds of those little ones the teachers of tomorrow. They will change in the minds of those little ones to create and to influence our leaders of tomorrow. And my prayer is, is that we'll see in the minds of those little ones, those that will come and to be the pastors, that will be the Sunday school teachers, that will be the music leaders and the missionaries of tomorrow. Those sold out for Jesus Christ. I want you to follow along with me this morning as we go to Proverbs chapter 31. If you want to look in your Bible, I'm actually going to be reading from the message translation this morning. It's up on the screen for you if you'll follow along with me. Proverbs chapter 31 verses 10 through 31, and this is what it says. A good woman is hard to find. Now, men, please do not cheer on that one. I want you to listen to the rest of what God's Word has to say. In fact, just the opposite, men. We should be cheering for the woman that God has blessed us with. Amen? In fact, if you would, men, let's just give our ladies a round of applause. The Word of God says, a good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. Her husband trusts her without reserve and never has reason to regret it. Never spiteful, she treats him generously all her life long. She shops around for the best yarns and cottons and enjoys knitting and sewing. She's like a trading ship that sails to faraway places and brings back exotic surprises. She's up before dawn, preparing breakfast for her family and organizing her day. She looks over a field and buys it. Then, with money, she puts aside and plants a garden. First thing in the morning, she dresses for work, rolls up her sleeves eager to get started. She senses the worth of her work, is in no hurry to call it quits for the day. She's skilled in the crafts of home and hearth and diligent in homemaking. She's quick to assist anyone in need, reaches out to help the poor. She doesn't worry about her family when it snows. Their winter clothes are all mended and ready to wear. She makes her own clothing and dresses in colorful linens and silks. Her husband is greatly respected when he deliberates with the city fathers. She designs gowns and sells them. She brings the sweaters. She knits in the dress shops. Her clothes are well made and elegant, and she always faces tomorrow with a smile. When she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say, and she always says it kindly. She keeps an eye on everyone in her household and keeps them all busy and productive. Her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in with words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you've outclassed them all. Charm can mislead and beauty soon fades. The woman to be admired and praised is the woman who loves in the fear and lives in the fear of God. Give her everything she deserves. Festoon her life with praises. Father, we come to you now. And Father, I am so thankful 
for my mother. I am so thankful, Father, for Susan, the mother of our children and the grandmother of our children. Father, I can truly say that I am blessed. I am blessed because you have blessed me with a godly mother and a godly wife for the mother of our children and the grandmother of our children. And Father, we too are very blessed to have two daughters that are godly women and they are godly mothers to our grandchildren. Father, I am so thankful this morning that this day that you have given us that we can come into your house and we can praise you, Lord, and thank you in honoring our mothers. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to share six quick points, and then I'm going to cut the Weaver Believers loose on you this morning. Number one, I want you to love your mother verbally. When was the last time you said to mom, I love you. You say, well, Marty, she should know that. I sent her cards, I sent her a flower, and maybe I even put it on the card. But did you take the time to call her and say, Mom, I just want you to know I love you. I want you to know, my friend, how strong those very words are. You say, well, Marty, they ought to see it by my actions. Yes, they should. But she needs to hear you verbalize to her, Mom, I love you. And number two, Love her physically. When was the last time you gave your mom a kiss on the cheek or you put your arm and gave her a big hug? I want you to remember this. Your mother has loved you physically. <laughs> Somebody say, yes, Marty, she has. <laughs> yes, she's loved you physically with discipline. But I don't want you to forget before you could ever remember, she was the one that changed your dirty diaper. And don't you ever forget it. She was the one that got up in the middle of the night to feed you and to take care of you. And for many of you husbands and fathers in this room, yes, I know that many of you heard those cries and you were just praying that God would not allow you to move too much so she would get up before you could. Am I right or wrong? Yes. I want to thank God for our mothers. We're to say, I love you. We're to put our arms around them and to show them physically what they mean to us. To show them that we love them. So we're to love them verbally. We're to love them physically. And we're to love them patiently. Aren't you so glad that mom had patience with you? We're to love our mothers with patience. We're to love her attentively. We're to give her that time that she deserves. Aren't you so glad that mom gave you time? She was always there for you. And my dear friend, we need to be there for mom. We need to take time and, and show her how much we love her by giving and investing our time into her life as well. I call it payback. We need to give her some payback. Although I remember my mom said to me when I had children, no payback comes to you. <laughs> so love her verbally, love her physically, love her with patience, and love her attentively. And my friend, we also need to love her generously. I remember the story of the little boy who went into the classroom, and his teacher asked him, he says, they were working on fractions, and he said, there are four in our family. And the teacher said, well, I understand there's four in your family. How many pieces of pie does your mom cut? She says, she only cuts three. Well, that's not right, little Johnny. There's four in your family. She says, you, don't need, to un you need to understand something. Mom will always do without to make sure everybody has plenty. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Absolutely. We're to love mom generously. We ought to be willing to give back to mom even more than mom gave to us. Now, I'm not going to ask by a show of hands in this room this morning, but how many of you took time this morning to make sure that you sent your mom something? Did you send your mom some flowers? Did you send her some chocolate, maybe? I hope, I see, I sent Susan chocolate and flowers because I know who's going to get the chocolates. <laughs> Amen. We actually shared that box of chocolates <laughs> because we're a team. You know, we need to love our moms generously. When was the last time you took her out for dinner? 
You say, well, Marty, she lives a good distance away. You know what you need to do? You need to find out what kind of restaurant's there. You need to send her a nice gift card and say, Mom, I want you to go out and enjoy. Have a wonderful time on us. Maybe she needs a vacation. When was the last time you bought her a vacation? Send her away. Let her have a good time just to enjoy some quiet and peace and relaxation. We need to love her generously as well. And we need to love her honorably. The Word of God says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land. I do pray that you love your mother with honor. She truly is the crowning jewel. Irma Bombeck said this, if you'll allow me this morning. She said, one day God created mothers. He had already worked uh, long and over time, and an angel said to him, Lord, you sure are spending a lot of time on this one. The Lord turned and he said, have you read the specs on this model? She's supposed to be completely washable, but not plastic. She's to have 180 moving parts and all of them replaceable. She's to have a kiss that will heal everything from a broken leg to a broken heart. She's to have a lap that will disappear whenever she stands up. She's to be able to function on black coffee and leftovers. And she's supposed to have six pair of hands. Six pair of hands, the angel said. That's impossible. Well, it's not the six pair of hands that bother me, said the Lord. It's the three pair of eyes. She's supposed to have one pair that sees through closed doors so that whatever she says, what are you kids doing in there? She already knows what they're doing. Moms, you can agree with that, amen? She has another pair in the back of her head to see all those things she's not supposed to see, but she must see. And then she has one pair right in front that can look at a child that just goofed and, and to communicate a love and an understanding without even saying a word. The angel said, Lord, that's just too much. You can't put that much in one model. Why don't you just rest for a little while and, and we'll resume this creation tomorrow on her. No, I can't, said the Lord. I'm close to creating something very much like myself. I've already come up with a model who can heal herself when she's sick, who can feed a family of six with one pound of hamburger and can persuade a nine-year-old to take a shower. <laughs> and then the angel looked at the model of motherhood and just a little bit closer he said, but Lord, she's just too soft. Oh, but she's tough, said the Lord. You'd be surprised how much this mother can do. Can she think, said the angel? Not only can she think, said the Lord, but she can reason and compromise and persuade. Then the angel reached over and touched her cheek. Lord, this one has a leak. Lord, I told you that you put way too much in this model. The Lord said, that's not a leak. You see, that's a tear. The angel said, what's the tear for? Well, it's for joy and for sadness and for sorrow, for disappointment and for pride. The angel said, you're a genius. And the Lord said, no, you see, I didn't put the tear there. This morning we honor our mothers. She truly is a gift from God. Father, what a blessing, what a blessing mom is. And Father, I pray that we make this a very special day for her. And Father, I pray that we'll not neglect to tell her that we love her. Father, to show our love physically, to let her feel the warmth of our hug and the tenderness of our kiss. And Father, I pray that we'll be patient. Father, for she was very patient with us. Father, as she grows old, I pray that we'll have patience with her to show her that 
tender love that she shows us. And, oh, Lord, I pray that we'll be attentive to her needs as she has met every need of ours. And, Father, she has even done without for us a true example of what you have done for us. And, Father, I pray that we will be generous with her. Give, Lord, because she has given so much to us. And Father, another example of who you are in our life, you gave of yourself for us. And oh Lord, we're to love her with honor, to be proud of her, just Lord, as we are to love you with honor and respect. So Father, I want to thank you for this very special day, for this Mother's Day. In Jesus' precious and holy name, all of God's people said, amen, amen and amen.